Hello, and welcome to Know the Animals. In today's episode, we will be delving into the subtropical waters of Stupa, a southern Peloponnesian coastal village located within the Mani Peninsula in Greece. Here, we will be taking a look at the marine wildlife that have inhabited this environment as I snorkel in the shallows. Throughout this video, it may become clear that the floral landscape is mostly dominated by a species of autotrophic protist called red algae. This organism is found all over the world, possessing an impressive range of tolerance that allows it to survive in environments with highly varying abiotic conditions. This helps to explain why it is so successful here. This is the ornate wrasse, a truly beautiful fish, the male of which consists mostly of a golden green colour, possessing a maroon and turquoise strip that flows from the pectoral fin up to the start of the dorsal fin. It is also seen that the male's head consists of an attractive brain-like pattern. The female consists mostly of dull yellows and browns, and is slightly smaller in size compared to the male. It is evident that these fish, in particular, appreciate the disturbance of rocks and sediment on the sea floor, that could reveal potentially consumable morsels. It is a facultative cleaner fish, meaning it has a varied diet, part of which consists of consuming the unwanted food and ectoparasites from larger fish. These fish are hermaphrodites, changing from females to males with age. The common cuttlefish. This organism is a cephalopod, a type of predatory mollusk. The cuttlefish shares its cephalopoda classification with organisms such as the squid, octopus and nautilus, characterised by their multitude of functional limbs. Cuttlefish are masters of disguise, with its ability to carry out mimesis, a method of camouflage used both in defensive and predatory behaviour. This organism changes the colour of its skin in seconds by controlling the pigmented chromatophore organs to adjust pigmentation of the skin. Even the texture of the cuttlefish's pliable skin can be changed to complement the environment on which it finds itself. Thousands of individual papillae are adjusted with muscles under the skin to help resemble its surroundings. The flathead grey mullet, a popular fish for consumption by fishing villages. Its characteristic pelagic swimming behaviour, as well as its preference for congregating into shoals, makes it an easy catch for fishermen. This fish possesses a thick and rigid upper lip, providing the answer to why it is also known as the thick-lipped mullet. The position of its pectoral fins is slightly elevated, as well as proportionally rather small. This fish has an admirable shimmer, displayed in some instances as the light reflects off its scales. Despite the tradition to consume this fish going back centuries, this species still seems to be plentiful in this area of stupa. This is a glimpse at a shoal of saddled sea bream. This is the juvenile group, as the common length is actually around 20 centimetres long. The prominent black spot located on its caudal peduncle of course provides the reason for its name. In recent years, the otolith of this species is used as an environmental indicator to help monitor the extent and severity of anthropogenic impacts. The otolith is a calcium carbonate structure found in the inner ear that allows the fish to perceive movement, gravity and acceleration. A wide-eyed flounder, an organism possessing the same biological traits as the cuttlefish, as chromatophores are also present beneath the skin. This wide-eyed flounder is a benthic fish, spending most of its life at the very bottom of the marine environment, typically lying on soft sediments. Within these sediments, it will find and consume small invertebrates, to which makes up the majority of its diet. Sexual dimorphism is displayed in this species of flounder, 
This means that some aspects of its morphology, when comparing the male and female, differ. In this case, this includes total length, as well as the size of its mouth gape. This fish is called the freckled goatfish. This species is highly adapted for foraging for food that is located in the sediment. Specialised barbels positioned on the base of the mouth contain taste buds as well as olfactory sensors, which help the fish to feel and taste its surroundings. Studies researching the typical contents of the goatfish's gut have found that crustaceans appear most commonly, with fish and various mollusks occurring slightly less frequently. Like the wide-eyed flounder, the freckled goatfish is a benthic swimmer, spending most of its time in muddy and sandy environments looking for prey. It is clear to see that this fish is easily distinguishable as a result of its black lateral line, following from the nostril tubes to the caudal fin, also known as the tail. Today's episode was an insight into the marine wildlife that inhabit the waters of Stupa. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching.